Well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Yes, we had a very interesting session at ESOC 2023. It was uh, about stroking women, uh, which is a very important subject and, and open call for research in the future. And basically during my presentation, I underlined the importance of hormones, sex hormones for stroke risk, because sex hormones uh, play an important role for cerebrovascular health. And in particular, they have many different uh, mechanism of action uh, at the level of the brain and at the level of the vessels of the brain. In particular, they can regulate the vasomotor tone by mediating vasodilation through NO-mediated mechanism. They also have important anti-inflammatory properties at both endothelial and systemic level, and they also regulate lipid metabolism with an important impact on the atherosclerotic plaque lesion development. Uh, moreover, the sex hormones have been shown to have an impact in brain repair after injury, and uh, they have uh, they, they have the the the, the possible. I mean, they have the the role of uh, enhancing neurogenesis and axonal sprouting after injury. Uh, moreover, sex hormones have also an impact on coagulation cascade. So they are uh, they play a pivotal role in the cerebrovascular health uh, and uh, with multiple and pleiotropic effect. However, uh, the sex uh, hormone, ther hormone therapy, it's a different topic, it's a different question. Uh, it is a complex topic because hormones are available in a variety of doses and forms, including injections, transdermal formulations, but also different kind of hormonal uh, combinations. And actually it is a, a, an even more complex topic because we prescribe them, them differently uh, in, across the globe from the United States states to Europe. So interpretation of data coming from the, uh, the randomized clinical trial that were uh, realized in the 90s uh, for um, primary and secondary cerebrovascular protection are quite difficult to be interpreted. But it is an open uh, area of research and uh, there are also other subsets of populations such as um, the gender affirming therapy for transgender and also androgen deprivation, for instance, in patients with prostate cancer that uh, underline this pivotal role of endogenous sex hormones for stroke risk. Concerning the presentation I did at ESOC, I focused on two main indications of hormonal therapy that are the uh, hormonal replacement therapy in the context of menopause. And uh, a second topic was uh, specifically um, focused on um, oral contraception for younger uh, women. So two different subset of population because in the first one, uh, we know very well from a, an epidemiological point of view that uh, menopause is a period of transition uh, it, which is very important uh, as a, a period for impacting the stroke risk. Indeed, in the premenopausal women, uh, the stroke uh, the, the stroke risk is is, is uh, lower compared to men of the same age, but in the postmenopausal uh, period, um, the risk of, of stroke increase increases uh, consequently in women, and uh, this is probably due to the um, to the decrease uh, in the in the in the estrogen levels in the blood, uh, and to the uh, the fact of losing the protective effect of estrogen exposure during the, which is actually what happens during the uh, reproductive phase, but it also uh, uh, is probably a consequence of an increased androgen to estrogen uh, ratio after uh, the menopause. And it is very interesting because recently we also had some data concerning um, the increased risk of stroke according to the type of menopause. For, so for instance, uh, women undergoing surgical menopause with a brutal and abrupt drop of estrogen hormones uh, due to the um, bilateral hophorectomy, and in some recent paper also in case of hysterectomy alone, um, well, the risk of stroke seems to be increased in these women. And at the same time, also the age at the menopause is also an important factor because when you, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, in more than one paper, uh, the, authors, the authors showed that uh, uh, younger the age, 
uh, and the menopause uh, higher the risk of stroke uh, in the future, uh, in the postmenopausal period. Uh, so all these epidemiological um, uh, data uh, suggested that probably the fact of replacing hormones uh, by replacing by, by giving a normal uh, therapy during the menopausal period could actually be protective uh, against uh, arterial uh, vascular events. However, all the uh, clinical trials that have been done in this topic uh, actually failed to demonstrate a protective effect. They were mostly neutral, but some of them some of them even uh, showed an increased risk of uh, stroke uh, in both the context of secondary and primary prevention. So basically, actually, the uh, American Heart Association guidelines that were published in 2014 do not recommend the use of hormonal replacement therapy in primary or secondary prevention uh, in postmenopausal women. And this, whatever the type of hormonal replacement therapy we are talking about. So even estrogen modulators should not be used uh, with these indications. In that patients, uh, the hormonal replacement therapy should be discussed at the individual level, taking into account the risk-benefit balance. And uh, what it is very important is that before uh, and during the discussion of these indications, uh, an extensive screening of vascular risk factors should be performed in these women with potentially an aggressive treatment of um, vascular risk factors that have been identified, and also by looking at specific uh, vascular risk factors that are um, associated with uh, women uh, stroke risk, which are, for instance, the complications during pregnancies uh, and also uh, uh, medical uh, complications uh, for having um, the pregnancies as well. So uh, these are very important points. And basically, the um, European Stroke Association, uh, sorry, the European Stroke Organization guidelines that were published in 2022 are perfectly in line with the uh, American Heart Association guidelines. Uh, so no indication for primary or secondary cerebrovascular prevention uh, for these women. Uh, the best therapeutic option when we uh, choose to treat these patients because of important symptoms of postmenopausal period, uh, well, should be probably a short period of treatment at low dose of estrogens and probably by um, uh, and probably uh, transdermal formulation also shown a better safety profile. So basically, these were the main concepts concerning the hormonal replacement therapy. And we also discussed about what to do if uh, a woman has a stroke, uh, if uh, a patient has a stroke during uh, the hormonal replacement therapy. And basically, in these cases, what it is uh, recommended is to interrupt the treatment. And after the stroke, probably rediscuss in a multidisciplinary setting the decision of resuming the treatment, always basing on an individual uh, benefit risk uh, profile and also by, uh, screen by a, an extensive screening of vascular risk factors. In the second part of the presentation, I talked about the uh, oral contraception, which is something very important because, well, it concerns younger women compared to the postmenopausal uh, women uh, we discussed for the uh, hormonal replacement treatment. But it is a, an important uh, topic because we have more than 100 million active users wo worldwide. And it is also a very complex topic because there are different pills um, uh, different generations of contraceptive pills that differ by uh, the dose of estrogens, nature of progestin, and also, uh, of course, the, the modalities of administration and dose distribution during the cycle. So this is something which is, uh, again, a complex topic with data that are not so easy to be interpreted. Uh, the meta-analysis that have been done in this uh, context concerning the arterial stroke risk show that basically oral contraception uh, is associated with a low absolute risk of arterial vascular uh, events uh, in the brain with um, uh, the Cochrane meta-analysis published in 2015 um, underlined uh, a risk of 10 to 20 per 100,000 uh, women per year. Uh, so 
The risk of ischemic stroke is basically low, but it increases with higher estrogen doses. And uh, probably the progestins do not have um, uh, a major impact uh, on the um, stroke risk. Uh, on the other way, uh, oral combined contraception uh, can be uh, associated with an increased risk of stroke when there are concomitant vascular risk factors. So once again, the take home message is to screen uh, women uh, for vascular risk factor and to treat uh, the identified ones aggressively before giving hormonal therapies. Uh, for instance, in young women uh, with associated vascular risk factors, uh, the odds ratio for uh, increased risk of ischemic stroke can go up to 30 times of the risk. And this is because um, the vascular risk factors probably play uh, a synergic effect on the arterial uh, risk, vascular risk. So the take home message is once again to screen extensively. And uh, when you identify a patient with a vascular risk factor, look for the other and treat them aggressively before uh, and in any case, even if they are very young. Uh, there is, uh, on the opposite, an increased risk of cerebral venous thrombosis, which has been uh, extensively um, showed uh, in different studies. Uh, so for um, uh, women that, that, that presented with a, cerebral, uh, with a cerebral venous thrombosis, it is very important to know that oral combined contraception is one of the main uh, risk factors. And this was the case, for instance, in the international study for cerebral venous thrombosis. And that even in this case, the risk increases with increased age, uh, estrogen dose, and also it is very important in case of thrombophilia. Uh, so the relative risk, which is associated with the oral combined contraception is about seven, 7.6. Uh, according to the meta-analysis on this um, particular topic. And it is not recommended according to the American Heart Association guidelines published in 2014 to um, uh, perform uh, a systematic screening for thrombophilia. But I would like to uh, really um, uh, highlight the importance of age and of uh, concomitant vascular risk factors in this context as well. So for patients that have more than 35 years, probably the discussion and the information about this risk uh, with the patient should be uh, really um, a priority. And uh, probably uh, for patients uh, uh, that have more than 45 years, the oral contraception should be avoided uh, for this vascular associated risk. Um, so basically the take-home messages are that endogenous sex hormones play an important role in cerebrovascular health, but that on the opposite, when we try to prescribe them because uh, of an indication, hormonal therapy is much, uh, a, it's much it's a complex topic because there are heterogeneous formulation, different route of administrations, and there are many other and concomitant factors that can impact the stroke risk.